Pass it all with retired Army Lieutenant Colonel and Intelligence Officer Chuck DeVore. And Arizona Senate candidate, former Air Force Major General Mick McGuire. Great to have you back, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Shelly. Okay, I want to start here to talk about this new general that has been tapped to head up things, uh, this attack, this war on Ukraine by Russia. General Alexander Dvornikov, this is in the Washington Post, was Russia's first commander overseeing its brutal campaign in Syria, where Russia force, Russian forces carried out widespread and indiscriminate bombardments of Syrian civilians, neighborhoods, and hospitals in tandem with President Bashar al-Assad's own wars and sieges. Um, general, do you have any take on why this guy was selected and what we may expect from him? Well, uh, my uh, suspicion is that uh, after his quote unquote successes at breaking the will of the people in Syria, uh, he's been called out to the Eastern Front there. We've seen that they've uh, cut down to just uh, two fronts, East and South, have nearly merged the two between Crimea and the Donbass. And I think this will mean that uh, in the next few days, they will try to increase the pressure they have where they have a larger ethnic presence of Russians and uh, uh, just a, an ability to surround the area. And I pray for peace, as you mentioned, with Reverend Graham. It's going to mm -hmm. be a tough road for those folks out there. It absolutely has been. And as you said, we'll continue to be. Uh, in the meantime, I want to play something that President Zelensky said on 60 Minutes about what he has been asking Americans and the Biden administration for. What are you asking of President Biden? To tell you the truth, long ago, I asked President Biden for very specific items. He has the list. President Biden can enter history as the person who stood shoulder to shoulder with the Ukrainian people who won and chose the right to have their own country. This also depends on him. And Colonel, we've heard a lot of folks say that they think the U.S. could be doing more, the Biden administration could step up and do more, um, and that they seem a bit hesitant to want to fully back Ukraine. Um, is it your assessment, as some wonder, that the U.S. has to still have some kind of relationship, this administration wants to, with Russia, because they're essentially negotiating the Iran nuke deal? How much does that factor in, and could we be doing more for Ukraine? Yes, it does factor in, and there's something else that factors in as well, which is decades of Joe Biden's experience in the U.S. Senate, where he was constantly on the wrong side of history when it came to the Cold War. His instinct is to appease, his instinct is to vacillate, his instinct is to prematurely give in to the opposition. And you're seeing that right now play out in what's happening in Ukraine and Russia's war on Ukraine. He's not providing nearly the volume of military equipment, nor the sophistication of military equipment. Plus, we need training. And so what's happening with these half measures is that more Ukrainians are dying, and the likelihood of Ukraine uh, not continuing as an independent country goes up because of the hesitation from Washington, D.C. And the Iran nuclear deal, by the way, a very, very bad deal uh, for the Middle East, for Israel, our friend, for America. Uh, that you're absolutely correct that they're trying to have the Russians as intermediaries and trying to bring them in on this deal. It'll be worth billions for Russian corporations. So that's what we're seeing, both Biden's history and the Russia deal. I'm hoping that he can be pressured into doing the right thing. And if he starts to do the right thing, we ought to praise him for it. So today, President Biden had a virtual summit or a virtual conversation with India's prime minister, and it was noted that he did not pressure him to stop bringing in Russian oil. General, do you think, uh, well, what do you make of India's position? I mean, they abstained on some important votes, um, and they seem to also be trying to carefully play both sides. Yeah, I think India, like many other countries in the world, are very nervous about our leadership because we don't have any. As Chuck mentioned, the biggest loser in this whole thing is going to be President Biden. You cannot have the Russians negotiating a deal with Iran that is not in our interests or the interest of our partner Israel at the same time that they are invading a neighboring sovereign nation like Ukraine and we're trying to piecemeal military aid to them to defend their country. It makes no sense to the world. So countries like India, Israel and the rest are looking at us saying, what are you doing? 
you're negotiating with the Russians on one side and saying you're going to supply the Ukrainians on the other. I keep telling people no one prays for peace more than the soldier. No one is asking mm -hmm. for anything other than the ability to give the Ukrainians the equipment to defend themselves. They can do it. We, need, we can get it to them and let them prevail. General, Colonel, thank you both for uh, lending us your expertise. Hope you'll come back soon. Thank you. Thanks, Shannon.